Hey everyone, this is Lissa with Mama Wears Many Hats, and today we're talking weird pregnancy symptoms. Hey everyone, this is Lissa, and if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Here we talk all things motherhood and basically how to be the mom we should be. Spoiler alert, is not like any other mom. If there's anything we can learn from pregnancy, it's the fact that no family, no motherhood journey is the same. You have to walk your own path, and that's what I'm sharing here today. Before I jump in, just make sure that you hit that like button if this is something that resonates. The dislike button if you're like, hey, please just save us all, cut it out. Hit subscribe so that you can be part of our community here. And make sure to ring that bell, pling it, ding it, make sure you know when I have new videos coming out. Anyway, so glad you're here. Today, we're jumping right into the content. None of my kids are napping. <laughs> we're all familiar with some of those more common pregnancy symptoms. Many women will experience a little bit of morning sickness in their first trimester, extreme fatigue and wanting to nap all the time, having to pee a lot, heartburn. There are certain things that we've heard of and we just kind of equate with pregnancy. But what happens if you have pregnancy symptoms or pregnancy byproducts that are maybe a little bit different than the norm? That's what today's video is about. I'm going to share my experience with you so that you know you're not alone in the event that you are experiencing some of these things. So I'm going to be talking about three of the more unique pregnancy byproducts, I guess you could say. They're not really symptoms. They happen because you're pregnant, but you don't necessarily think you're pregnant because of them, if that makes sense. The first thing I want to talk to you about today is long-term morning sickness. Now, I know that there are some conditions, HG, which I'm not even gonna try and say the actual term. I'll have it in the description below and I'll link out to some information about it. That is basically morning sickness to the point of dehydration and health issues like vomiting, all that kind of stuff through your entire pregnancy. Now for me, I did not have that bad. I wasn't diagnosed with HG. However, I did have morning sickness that lasted well into my second trimester. And it was morning sickness that I was repeatedly getting sick on during the day for long periods of time and was hindering me actually doing my job, even working from home. Now, if this is something that you experience, just know everything's most likely fine with the baby. That is not in any way indicative that you're having an abnormal pregnancy. Some people just have worse morning sickness or longer morning sickness than others. If you are having extended morning sickness, please make sure to talk to your OB or your midwife because you wanna make sure that you are checking in and eliminating things like HG and different things like that. So for me, I had with all three of my pregnancies, pregnancies morning sickness well into the second trimester. And again, as I said, it, it was morning sickness that was keeping me vomiting on the regular. And in the end, I had to weigh the risks and uh, rewards, I guess you could say, of going on a medication. With my first child, I did not go on a medication, um, even though I was working. I had morning sickness up until just after 21 weeks. It was for the most part in the morning or in the evening. And a lot of it was just constant queasiness. With my second, I was getting sick multiple times a day, all day, up through about 24, 25 weeks um, pregnant. With her, I did end up going on what's known as diclegis, which is what my OB recommended to me. Um, I didn't have any bad side effects, but obviously that's a decision you have to make with your practitioner. It did help me a lot be able to like with being able to function and everyone knows if you've had more than one kid morning sickness with the first is horrible morning sickness with the second is unimaginable because you still have a little baby or toddler or kid that needs you to take care of them so i highly encourage you if you're having prolonged morning sickness please make sure to talk to your doctor about the alternatives if you're more of a homeopathic person which i normally am for me to actually go and end up on medicine for something like that is really, really rare. I think aside from that, I had been on a prescription like once in my life. I don't like taking medicine. I People have to tell me to take ibuprofen when I have a headache. That being said, if you are experiencing morning sickness, some things that you can try, you'll see a lot, there's those Prego Pops, and I've heard that works for some people. Some people recommend ginger. I personally did not have the best results with that. 
The only thing that worked for me with all of my pregnancy in mitigating my morning sickness was first and foremost eating something before I even got out of bed in the morning. Like before I'd even sit up, I kept crackers, I kept a granola bar, I kept something by my bed. And before I would even move, I would lean over, eat some of it, and then lay for about five to 10 more minutes to let it hit my stomach. When I did that, it really helped me not to get sick as soon as I stepped out of bed. A lot of times morning sickness that's happening is happening because your stomach is empty from the whole night. You'll probably notice as you go through your pregnancy that if you don't eat for extended periods of time, you start to feel sick. So imagine you've just slept for eight hours, hopefully, and you wake up and of course you're feeling sick. The first thing you can do is make sure to get something in your stomach before you stand up, before your body registers that you are awake to get ahead of it. Second, what helped me a lot was peppermint. Now, um, I did this by diffusing peppermint oil and also by eating Altoids. They're very, very strong. The peppermint flavor is super, super strong. I'm not even kidding. I'd be at work and I had a can of Altoids on my, a tin of Altoids on my desk and I would pop one as soon as I started feeling in any way queasy and it would normally buy me another 30 minutes before I would start to feel queasy again. So that was my little pregnancy hack for morning sickness was Altoids and your breath smells good. So really it's a win-win. Uncommon pregnancy occurrence number two is round ligament pain. Round ligament pain is something that's a little different for everybody, but basically the tendon that's around your uterus as your uterus is um, expanding, it stretches that ligament. I'm sure your OBs talk to you about how your body produces relaxin, which allows your muscles and your ligaments to expand and make room for that changing baby. For people who have a shorter round ligament, which is, again is the ligament that's around near your uterus, as you expand, that can be very trying on that ligament, so to speak. If you're feeling that pain, it's most likely down in the, like just above your hip towards the back, kind of towards the front. Um, for me, my experience was a very sharp pain, um, which if you go back to my first birth story, I'll link it up here. Um, I shared a little bit about how basically the round ligament pain for me was so bad that I was able to proceed and have an unmedicated labor because of my experience with the round ligament pain. I am grateful that I had that experience, but it was also something that I was really concerned about in the beginning. And when I was talking to my OB at the time, which you'll also remember I switched OBs after this, um, he wasn't really giving me a lot of information and there really isn't much you can do. What I found that helped me during the worst parts of the round ligament pain, took Tylenol, which again, I know I say it, it sounds like I don't take a lot of medicine and it probably sounds like I take a lot of medicine. I really don't. Um, I would take Tylenol for it though because it was so bad. Um, additionally, if you are familiar with the cat cow, which is basically when you're on your hands and knees and you arch your back and then you drop your stomach, doing that over a few times would help stretch out my um, round ligament and my hip. I noticed that with my second and third pregnancies where for some people I'd heard they had worse round ligament pain. I didn't, but I was also very intentional about chiropractic adjustments and also um, doing a lot of work on a yoga ball and a birth ball from very early on. That I think is gonna be a hit or a miss for you. Um, but just know that if you're experiencing that pain, it's something that you can bring up to your doctor, you can ask for information about round ligament pain and really just do your best to stretch it out and know that it will, it'll hit a point where it doesn't hurt nearly as bad. Pregnancy symptom experience number three, weird rashes. <laughs> I thought with my last two pregnancies, and I'll actually, I think I have some pictures and I'll drop them in here. I was fine. And then one day I started getting these blotchy things on my chest and I started getting, they, they, over the course of days, they moved up my neck. It was all over my, my breast, like everywhere. And it itched, it itched like none other. I got it on my legs and my knee. Like, it really just spread over my entire body. Now, per my OB, and your OB may tell you differently, but please, again, if you're experiencing this, connect with them and find out. Basically, with all the hormones in your body, sometimes if you you may have allergic reactions or things because of how everything is changing inside. However, if you are closer to delivery time, there is also a, a thing called PUPS, which is a severe rash. Normally it happens between 34 to 36 weeks of gestation and it lasts until after you have the baby. So depending on when this is happening for you, 
you may ask your OB if that's what it is. There are a couple different rash symptoms. I will lo link to some of those below as well. If you are experiencing this, this is one thing that I remember I Googled, I looked, I was trying to find everything and it was so hard to find information about these gross pregnancy rashes that no one could explain to me. I'm sorry, I still can't explain them to you, but I can tell you what helped me. Number one, what helped me was Sarna. Okay, this is a, a lotion. It has 0.5% camophore and 0.5% methyl. And this was an anti-itch lotion. And this would help for a quick relief, but it wouldn't necessarily last. So normally if it was keeping me from sleeping, that kind of stuff, that's when I would put this on. And it felt really good for about 10 seconds. Additionally, aloe vera had a similar effect where it would cool it, it would feel better and that would buy me a little bit of relief. I also tried coconut oil, keeping it moisturized, mixing a little lavender into that. I would encourage you to be careful if you're doing anything with essential oils and a rash, just because sometimes those things, again, the rash could be the result of your body reacting with something it would normally react with because of the pregnancy, different things like that. I've heard other people talk about doing an oatmeal bath. I never personally did an oatmeal bath because number one, I don't like baths. And I think in my head, I just was picturing sitting in a bathtub of oatmeal, which I know is not what it is, but it was really hard for me mentally to get over that. That is an option that you can try. Pat as it sounds also, just not having clothes on and ice packs with my third was the best relief. I'm not even kidding. I literally bought a bunch of ice packs. My mother-in-law had a giant one that she let me use and that was a huge lifesaver. I will link to that one below. And it was just this massive ice pack keeping the freezer and then I would just lay it on the worst parts. And that for me, the ice pack for me was the best in dealing with the itchiness from that. So if you are experiencing a weird rash and now just know I'm not talking about like oh a little patch. I'm talking about, you'll see in the pictures, core of like horrible rash. Okay, and they don't know why our bodies respond like that, but there's a whole crap load of stuff going on. Again, it's nothing to be worried about. I really want to encourage you, talk to your OB about that. Make sure that you're informed and aware of what that could be and talk with them about, about, about the best solutions for you. So those are my three random pregnancy, I keep wanting to say symptoms, things that happened during pregnancy, symptoms I had during pregnancy that were not easily found. I wanna assure you, they are normal. Everyone's pregnancy journey is different. I know some people who had morning sickness for like weeks and weeks and weeks in their entire pregnancy. And I know some people who did not experience one iota of morning sickness. It happens. I know a lot of people who talk about having pregnant um, cravings during pregnancy. I didn't get any of that. It was actually a bummer. I wanted to be able to be like, oh, I had this craving. I didn't have any cravings. The closest thing I had to a craving was during my first pregnancy, I would have this huge need for water. <laughs> But I think that's just because I was kind of dehydrated going into pregnancy and my body was trying to catch up because since that pregnancy, I've not had that same urge, but I've also been breastfeeding or pregnant, feels like forever. And so I drank a lot of water, <laughs> but really that was like the closest thing was I would be so thirsty and I'd need to get water like immediately. That was the closest thing I had to a pregnancy craving with any of my pregnancies, which is kind of a bummer. I had a lot of aversions to food where stuff just tasted gross or as you've seen in previous videos, I love coffee. With two out of three of my pregnancies, I could not stand the smell of coffee. It was so sad until about like two thirds through it and then I was okay. But like I couldn't even go into a Starbucks because it just made me feel so sick. I also, before I got pregnant with my first son, I had been eating fairly plant-based and I had, like I could not eat vegetables because they tasted like dirt. All I wanted was like meat, lots of meat, which was, probably because my body was deficient in something. So that's all to say, everyone's journey is different. Do your own thing, talk with your support system and your support staff, your doctor, your midwife, your doula, your husband, whoever. Please don't fear because you consult Dr. Google and it says that you're probably dying because Google is a search engine, it's not a doctor, it's not a midwife, it's not even someone who has a lot of anecdotal advice okay it's just a conglomeration of lots of information and it's going to pull what sounds like maybe could be it so all that to say talk to your doctor 
remember it's your journey it's your pregnancy you do you mama okay that's it i hope you enjoyed this video if you'd like to see more about pregnancy please let me know i'm actually going to also be doing today a video all about what the hospital actually gives you when you have a baby. All those giant pads you've heard about, I'm actually gonna show you what they look like because I still have a bunch of them. <laughs> so make sure to tune in next week for that one. All right, mamas, thank you so much. Make sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, jump in the comments, let me know what kind of crazy pregnancy uh, symptoms or experiences did you have that you had a hard time finding anyone else who had. Or if you didn't have any, let us know so we can hate you. Not really. We won't hate you. We'll be super excited that you had an amazing and wonderful pregnancy. All right, mamas. That's it. Stay safe. Talk to you later.